Hi guys, and welcome back to another episode of Rebuilding Stockport. We're here on the page of Frano Fazic. But before we do any of that, it's the start of the week. Time to thank new patrons. And this week, uh, Mark Piers and Francisco Assis both up their pledges. So again, massive thank you to people doing that. You really don't need to do that. Anything is more than enough to be honest. Uh, just watching the videos is awesome as well. And also, new patron, uh, Timothy Borg. So again, massive thank you to you as well. And just everyone watching the videos. I'm having a really good time with this series. It's just, I've really enjoyed coming back to YouTube. I've enjoyed my second go at YouTube a lot more uh, than I did towards the end of the first one, that is for sure. It's just, it just feels so much more relaxing. I actually really enjoy making the videos and I hope that comes across. It gives me a chance to be a bit more creative and uh, I've got some things in store for that. But more than that, another time perhaps. Now, I've uploaded the new version of the tactic that we've been using for a little while now. Uh, to the Steam Workshop again. I'll put a link in the description to that. So if you want to go check that out and try it out yourself, because I think it's vastly better than the one we were using before, as you could pretty much tell from the way we're playing this year. Uh, I want to get your thoughts on it, basically see how it does with your teams, really. I heard a rumour that Frano Fazic moonlights as a popular drag queen, Frano Fay, in Scottish nightclubs. This alter ego apparently also has a restraining order against Regan Booty. Mm -hmm. Yeah, stands as the reason, doesn't it? The reason the media is reporting Celtic's interest in Frano Fazic is due to hearsay linking him to a Bosnian syndicate running Buckfast to Scotland. A lot of Scottish connections here. And while we're on the topic of Regan Booty, sort of, heard there was a new band in Stockport to replace Scott Duxbury's. It's called Booty's Beauty's Banging Brass Band, and they stand quite far away while playing bangers. I mean, yeah, it stands to reason they play quite far away. Right, we've got quite a lot to do in this episode. We've had a game off camera, we've got a game, then some more games off camera, and then a game. This is going to be a tough-ass episode. Hopefully we can come through with flying colours. And we did exactly that against Birmingham. Technically, I think this is our seventh consecutive league victory. Now, remember, Stockport actually set a record at one point, I think, for winning nine consecutive matches uh, back in the day, although I believe the record was because they didn't concede during that period. That is something we're not going to be doing, but we did get a clean sheet here, uh, and as a result, Molden got a 6.9. I've seen him get better ratings in games where we've played far, far worse. But there you go. Uh, a goal from uh, Juro both sets and a goal from Liam Miller, giving us a comfortable victory against bottom of the table Birmingham. Could have been a lot more, but we weren't really at the races that much, did what we needed to do. And that has made, uh, I don't think, any difference at the top. I think both Bournemouth and Fulham won, so we're still five points clear of Fulham and nine points clear of Bournemouth. So things are looking pretty good in that sense. I, I still think we're a pretty much shoo-in for promotion, uh, but I still think the title could go either way, particularly if Fulham were to get a win in today's game. However, I did quickly want to show you the Premier League because I had a quick gander while I was just messing around. Firstly, Sheffield United not having the best time of it, unfortunately. But that is not why I brought you here. I brought you here because John Guidetti is the top scorer in the Premier League. I, I don't know how. He plays for Arsenal now. Uh, I know he was very highly rated when he was young, but I thought the general conception of Guidetti was that he was a player that never really lived up to any of his potential. And somehow he signed for Arsenal and is now the top goal scorer in the Premier League at the age of 31. That to me is one of the most surprising top scorers at this point of a season of a save that I think I've ever seen. If you've got a more weird one, do let me know. I'd be very interested to see it. In case anyone was wondering, it was after he joined Alaves. He's been absolutely smashing goals in and he signed for Arsenal for £30 million. But today it's Fulham at home in the league. A win for Fulham would see them go two points behind us. A win for us, though, could see us go eight points clear at the top, and that would be... Why are they the favourites? We've won seven... Hang on, wait. Oh, that was a cup game or something? I don't know. We've won seven league matches in a row. Why are we not the favourites for this match? Right, so suspensions, unfortunately, for Gribben and Keith Burton, which is a bit of a problem. Uh, now, do we go both sets or Ida? Who's actually performed better at the more Both sets, I tell you what. I tell you what. Both sets... Oh, oh I hate when it does that has actually sort of nailed down a, a, a starting spot in this team at the moment, and I'm prepared to continue with him in that role, frankly. So Okoro, Fazic, Booty and Davison, Nerfield, Basic, Gray, Laird, Molden, perfect. Lovely old job. On the bench, Bryn, Poole, Ennis, Thorpe, Mikic, Hume, and of course, Adam Ida. It's nice that he's back fit, uh, but both sets has earned his place in the starting lineup. Okay, so again, the top sides in this division seem to have very few regens. Uh, they've got one guy who's a complete forward called Alan Riley, who, wow, he actually came through at Cardiff Met University. That's pretty cool. Didn't they, weren't they in the Welsh Cup final or something over the weekend? I think they lost, but might be wrong on that one. Um, I think the last time we played Fulham, we lost to a Jean-Michel Serry long-range Thunderbolt. So hopefully that won't happen again. I genuinely feel like if we were to win this game, even though it would only be 20 matches into the season, you'd have to say that that's practically the title, nearly. Zambo Angisa, oh, 
And Akora does beautifully. Oh, Bosex has dispossessed him. I wasn't even commentating because, oh, he's missed it. Akora, oh, that is just pure luck. Stockport won, Fulham nil. John Akora, who actually won player of the month and young player of the month last month. Uh, he's really stepped it up. I wasn't even commentating because they just had the ball at the back. Terrible play there. Bosex picks it up. I think he takes this a bit too early, to be honest. But it comes back to him very fortuitously. And John Okoro puts it in the back of the net. And that would be a massive goal. That's so fortunate for us. Miller. Maybe we'll have to play on the counter. We're quite good when we get a chance to do that. It's just that the chance doesn't actually crop up that often. Nerf fill, bringing it forward. Miller, he's going to go all the way through here. Potentially, he's all the way through here and saved by Srebinja. Here we go. Let's throw. Davidson, edge of the box and Nerf fill. Oh, <laughs> it's Stockport 2, Fulham nothing. And you can see the anguish on their faces. This is very, very well worked. Laird takes it short. Davidson pings one across the box and Nerfville hits it first time. He's determined to say why he should be in the team and not Keith Burton, but we've got competition for that spot and I'm a fan. Well, well, well. Got to half time, and that's a game and a half now without conceding a goal. Fulham love it in these wide areas, so we're going to try and mark up Musonda because he's the most dangerous one, I think. Although it might go in on Fisher, but not mark him. Plenty of room out wide and Nerfville surely will be found by Regan Booty here. Booty's going himself. Goes for Fazic. Oh, Frano Fazic. Stockport 3, Fulham 0. What was I saying about him not having good long shots? It seems that it doesn't matter whether he has good long shots or not. It's 3-0 here, and it's deserved in the end. We, we've just slowly just been better than them. This is wonderful from Regan Booty as well. To actually take the Fulham players on there, slip it back inside, and that is a fantastically worked goal. It's 3-0, and we are going top of the league. Booty's free kick. Surely not another one. And Basic has put it over the bar. That could have been four. Mawson, I would like it if we were to get another clean sheet in this match, to be honest. Oh, oh wonderful save from Louis Molden. Back-to-back -back clean sheets would be a rarity for us, so I want to see it. I'm going to give Ida the rest of the game, and I'm going to bring on John Hume. I know it's the third sub, but I just want to keep things fresh now that, now that we've got a 3-0 lead. I want to keep giving John Hume as much game time as possible. Plus, as we established in our analysis video last season, Hume is a player that seems to do a good job when he comes in to kill off games. He's not as creative, but he does have that extra sort of competitive nature that could be very helpful. Mawson. Fazic. Oh, wonderful. Absolutely bloody fantastic. Adam Ida off the bench, his first appearance since that injury, and he scored within six or seven minutes of this. I can't believe that Fulham were so bad here. Mawson just is a suicidal pass. Fazic eventually picks this up. Lovely ball through the channel from Fazic, and Ida just slips it in off the post. 4 0 here at Edgeley Park, and I better buy a pimp costume, is all I'm saying at this point. Knock it inside, maybe. Goes for Davidson. He can normally pick someone out. Fazic. Oh, here we go. John Hume. Oh, what a save. Ennis. Oh, it's gone back for Nerf Field Ball in an Ida. Oh, my God. Hume nearly had his first ever senior goal. What a moment that would have been for the youngster. Davidson again. He might have a dribble past someone here. He might fancy it. Fazic. Oh, he's got something in his... Oh, what a save. Fazic nearly had another one there. Well, I mean, Stockport 4, Fulham 0. Okoro, Nerf Field, Fazic and Adam Ida. Fazic will get man of the match for his goal and an assist. But just another stunning performance. We're going to the Premier League. I I'm like, it's not much of a risk to say at this point, but I feel like we are. We've just got 11 points clear, uh, not of Fulham, but of Bournemouth. And yeah, getting on Amazon now to get that pimp costume. So off the back of the 4-0 thumping of Fulham, uh, we somehow managed to not beat Hull. Um, very disappointing. Just long range goals have been the bane of my life in these last two games. All three of Hull's goals in this game were from range. Marcondes scored one and Dan Darnell Graham got two more for them in this match. John Okoro did grab a pair for us and one of his was a brilliant long range curler to be fair. And Frano Fazic also got one. But to only have this game, we weren't that great on the night. But the fact that we conceded three goals from outside the penalty area was very, very disappointing. And it dropped points for us. And then unfortunately, it was a similar story against Sunderland. This one was much, much worse though. Both the goals, the first two goals, were from range again. Uh, Joseph's little one was just inside the box, but it deflected, which was very annoying. And then they got given a penalty as well. Goals from Bosec and Frano Fazic, who had to play on the right-hand side today because Okoro got injured. Um, and we went down 3-2 to Sunderland. Back-to-back -back clean sheets, looking really good. And all of a sudden, suddenly conceded six goals in two games, five from range and one penalty. Very, very frustrating. Still scoring tons of goals, but we really just got stiffed over two matches. And that's not done well for the league. That's brought things much closer. We're now only three points clear of Fulham. And and six points clear of Bournemouth. We've sacrificed five points on these guys over those two periods of games because they are really coming for us. So we're going to have to step things up a little bit and we can't have more games like that. But today we take a break from that in the League Cup against Norwich. So we want to go as, as full strength as we basically can. So, oh, Okoro is actually fit again, which is nice. Unfortunately, Liam Miller picked up an injury, so he will miss today's game. Uh, I've been alternating Bosets and Ida. Bosets has scored a couple of goals in this period, so he will get his place back. Uh, Fazic or Gribbin? 
Oh, I tell you what, it's tight in it. I'm going to go with Gribbin uh, for this one since Fazic played in the last game. So both sets, Ennis, Gribbin, Okoro, Booty Davidson, Burton, because Nerfil played the last one, Basic, Gray, and Laird, Molden, um, sorry, uh, Mikic actually started the last match too, so Laird had a little rest. On the bench, Bryn, Nerfil, Amar, who's back, which is nice, Thorpe, Poole, Darren Leckie, and Freyno Fazic. The fact that we've already beaten them this year at Carrow Road gives me hope, but we've just hit a tiny snag of bad form and we need something to bring us back out of it. Because I, you know when it goes like this, when you just suddenly lose a couple of games out of nowhere or just drop points for no reason, and then you really do need something, otherwise it just festers. We just need to use this game as firstly a way to get to a League Cup semi-final. This is as good a chance as we're going to get at that point. Uh, Man United are already through, as are West Ham. So um, yeah, I don't know who the other game is. It's Norwich versus, uh, sorry, Newcastle Tottenham. Roberts is out there. Should be able to win this. Here we go. Breakaway time. Niall Ennis with the chance to prove himself today. Bombing forward. And he has found Bosets. There's men running beyond. One of them is Regan Booty. That was a really nice ball from Bosets to set Booty through. Laird takes it short. Davidson could maybe find Burton at the back post like we did with Nerfield. Booty might be able to... Oh, I thought Booty was going to pop out. Banger. And it's another save from Johnson. We've looked really good so far. This is what I want to see from us. Give players more of an option. Laird. Gribbin. Oh, cutting inside. You know he's going to go for it. Both sets and save by Johnson again. Oh, please not another free kick goal. Oh, I'd say we've definitely been the better side in this game, but we need a goal. We need something here. We're just not really at the races at the moment. Roberts, Ennis. Right, we need to get lads in the box soon. Ennis pulls it across. Davidson's header saved by Johnston. Okay, solid first half. I'd say we were definitely the better side, keeping a lot of the ball, uh, getting some shots on target. Norwich not really creating a great deal, but we, we need to do better. Another 45 minutes of that, and I feel like we'll find enough chances to just get ourselves a goal. We've also created the only chances of the match, too. Lewis, end of the channel, should easily be mopped up by Gray. Oh, no! You have got to be having a bubble bath. This is... When, when it rains, it pours. Like, we were playing completely fine up until the last two matches, and all of a sudden, things just start happening. And then in this game, we're controlling the match, doing just fine, and then John Gray... What is that? Tom chicks through, and Norwich, with their first shot on target, have scored a goal, and they lead in the F EFL Cup quarterfinal what are we doing here we go gribbon right let's see some fight out of you guys burton's ball booty's header cleared away knocked down both sets he's hit the post it's like when i talk about the switch being flipped oh and it's both sets how has that not gone in as well Akora's had a really poor day as well we'll get amar in these are be my changes for now switch the wingers up a little bit we're missing liam miller if we just find an equalizer we could take the penalties again like we did against watford ball in face it yes norwich won stockport won frano face it i tell you what he is coming up with the goods in the last few matches he's really finding goals andy davidson what an assist this is from andy davidson he's got one hell of an eye for a pass i thought he was just going to drop this off he just digs out an unbelievable ball face it fades off to the back post and it is 1-1 here at carrow road right we'll just turn it off a very attacking shall we I feel like we've deserved it. Oh, God, Booty's taking a knock. Uh, mm, bruised ankle. That is quite bad, though. We might have to get Darren Leckie on for his debut uh, for Stockport County in a very, very important match. One thing I can take at least confidence from is we've played very, very well on the night here and just somehow have only... I can't believe... It's our mistake as well. The John Gray error. Unless there's one last thing in the tail. Keith Burton. Can he dig a cross out? He can't. Uh-oh. Oh, phew. Oh, no. Wait, what? When did John Gray get sent off? It just... Did he get sent off for that foul there? Just turn him into a libero, shall we? Um, okay, who's tall? How'd you like playing centre-back for a bit? Just for these final two seconds of the game. Just to create a bit of height, I feel like. I don't know, that's so strange. I'm still very confused as to how that was a red card or what even happened there, but it does look as if we're going to go to penalties here at Carrow Road. Leckie's going to end up finishing the game at, at centre-back, which is not what I would have expected he would have hoped for on his debut here. But we're going to penalties against Norwich here. Somehow, this game, we deserve the win. And we're going to get mugged off, I feel like. But, you know, oh well. Oh, please not another free kick. Samansky, and there we are, going to penalties. I still don't know how John Gray got sent off. I can't believe we've let ourselves get into this situation, to be honest. We should have had this game to bed. Uh, but it just shows you that when the confidence is disappearing for some reason, it really is disappearing. And Bufau scores for Norwich. We're going to lose the penalties, though. Juro Bosets slides it down the middle. One all here at Carrow Road. Hurrahan for Norwich. Come on, Louis. You were the hero against Watford. It's the second penalty. They've already scored more than Watford did. Andy Davidson. Oh, and it's saved, and here we go. It's just, yeah, we're, we're done. Smansky for Norwich. Scored. Frano phase, which will probably miss. Oh, he's actually scored, at least. He scored a goal and a pen. I think if Diaz scores this, Norwich are through. Which he has. And, oh no, well, makeshift centre-back Darren Leckie um, <laughs> has the chance to just about keep us in. He's going to miss. Yep, there you go. Norwich are through to the semi-final of the EFL Cup. Because that's just happened. Right, let's see this red card. And... Oh. 
apparently Gray pushed him and got himself a second yellow for that. Weird that we didn't see a highlight of it at all. Um, but yeah, there you go. So that's why we were down to 10 men. What a weird game. Well, um, so we're out of the EFL Cup now and just out of magical nowhere, suddenly we can't win a match. It's very strange when that happens. You, you, we won eight in a row and then it goes, hmm, wouldn't it be funny if you just didn't uh, anymore so that's three matches now without a win we're out in dreadful fashion frankly the fact that it was a john gray error then he gets red carded the, the fact that we had so many chances and should have scored in that game it, it's just a travesty uh, that we've thrown that away but hey sometimes shit happens you know Anyway, if you have enjoyed this episode, it was all going so well uh, up until we beat Fulham 4-0 and then the wheels just came off. Right, we're going to do a big batch in the next one because I want to try and get through the season still um, in large chunks, you know, fairly large chunks. So I think we're going to... Oh, that's a long way, actually. That's, that's a, probably a bit too much for that. That'd be a lot. So we might come back and do Leeds United. That'll be six matches off camera, which is still a fair few games. Um, but, you know, we do want to start pushing on a little bit now. That That's just so disappointing, the way that's all come to pass. Three away games and just nothing at one point. We need to get back on the winning ways. We need to uh, win against Millwall. We've got three home games now. I want to see us win all three of these and just remind ourselves what the confidence feels like and then we can just get going again after that. That's the plan anyway. So if you've enjoyed this episode and whatever that was towards the end, drop a like on the video. That'd be fantastic. And if you're new to the channel, hey, subscribe. It's fun. I'll see you guys soon. Thanks so much for watching. Bye-bye.